Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today I want to talk about track stacks. Track stacks are one of my favorite features about Logic, and if you're not using them in your own Logic projects, you know, you do you, but I really think there's a missed opportunity here. In a nutshell, track stacks are folders that allow us to combine many tracks into a single track lane. So it's easy to collapse and expand and navigate and just organize our sessions, but there's also creative opportunities as well. So for example, maybe you're working on an orchestral or cinematic piece or a modern pop piece where there's a lot of tracks. It's not uncommon these days for projects to balloon in size well past 100 tracks. And with the newest updates with Logic expanding up to 1,000 audio tracks in a session, a thousand software instrument tracks, so on and so forth, track stacks will be increasingly important to navigating and producing within your Logic projects. So to create a track stack, it's pretty simple. You just select the tracks that you wanna include in the track stack. You go to track, create track stack. And then we're offered two options, either a folder stack or a summing stack. For right now, we're gonna focus on summing stacks, though we're gonna talk about both in this video. If I hit create, we can see that our tracks have now been reorganized to be part of this folder here. And if we click on this triangle here in the track header, we can collapse or expand our track stack. And we can do the same in the mixer here. We can collapse, we can expand. Very often use track stacks when I'm mixing projects for clients. I'll combine all of the drum tracks into a single track stack, all of the backing vocals into a single track stack. It just makes it way easier to organize, navigate, and process. As you can see that the output for my tracks are no longer set up for stereo output. Instead, they've been adjusted to bus 106. And bus 106 turns out to be the input for our track stack. Track stack channels are essentially auxiliary channels. So much like selecting a send and then choosing a bus, and then we get a new auxiliary channel at the end of the mixer for us to route our sounds to, instead of having to go through all of these steps, Track Stacks consolidates the steps, allowing us to route all of these tracks to the same output and create this organizational tool for us to organize our sessions. So let's dig in further. I'm gonna get rid of this empty track stack here. And I have Drum Machine Designer and the Atlanta kit set up. Drum Machine Designer and Drum Kit Designer when using producer kits out of the gate are set up as summing stacks. So if I click on the triangle here, we expand the view of Drum Machine Designer to reveal a lot of tracks. We have snares, we have toms, kicks, etc. Many instruments that are combined into a single instrument. So let's take a listen to this pattern that I have here. Already you can see that there's a lot of value in summing stacks. We're able to combine all of the outputs of these various instruments to a single output or auxiliary channel. We have this collapsible, expandable folder system. So we can have our cake and eat it too. We can process just the kick if we need to, or we can process the entire instrument as a whole. So we can solo the whole stack. We can mute it. And we can also process it. So I'm gonna select the compressor here and just go to town. So I bet you can imagine how this might play into your own sessions when you're working on your drums or your synths. But it goes even further than just organizing and processing. So let's just set these back to their original state. And I wanna lay down a bass sound to this particular performance that I have here. So let me open a new instance of Alchemy, create. And I wanna open up Alchemy. There's two particular sounds that I wanna to add to this. So blown woofer is a bass sound that I like a lot. Let's adjust the tube here to add a little more distortion. And I also wanna add a sub ear bass sound to kinda of complete the package here. So I'm gonna duplicate this Alchemy track and for this one, I'm going to look for the analog subsonic preset. Right there. Let's bring up the compression. Cool. So you would think that I would have to either record one of these two bass patches. And once I'm done recording, I could use option, click and drag the region down to apply the performance to the other bass sound. 
But instead, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to select both of these software instrument tracks, go to track, create track stack, and create a summing stack. And now I can play not just one of these bass sounds, but both at the same time. And you can see in the mixer here. Super handy. So now let's record to this pattern. Select low latency mode. Here we go. There we have it. So now we're able to play both instruments at the same time. And if I wanna process both as well, we can. And once we have a patch that we are really proud of and we really want to hold on to for future projects, we can just go down here to save within the library here. We can save this as Super Base 2. And now it's contained within the user patches within the library. So let's create a new instrument track and we'll just open up Alchemy. And if I click on the little triangle that pops up next to the setting tab here, user patches, and there we have it. Our entire track stack is saved within the library for future use. Okay, so at this point, there's lots of opportunity with summing stacks, but let's dig into folder stacks and what those are all about. If I select these two tracks and I just drag them outside of the summing stack, you can see that they've been removed from that stack. Very easy to move instruments in and out of track stacks. So if I open this guy up, drag these in, drag them out, and we can see that the output is being adapted. Right now, the output is set to stereo output because these instruments are not part of a track stack. But if I drag them into this track stack here, we can see that the output has been adjusted accordingly. Perfect. But instead, let me go up to track, create track stack, and we'll create a folder stack. Out of the gate, you can already see that this looks much different compared to the Atlantic kit, which is a summing stack. We don't have the opportunity to adjust the input because there is no input. If I expand the folder stack, the output for these tracks is still stereo output. The routing has not been adjusted. We also don't have any room for plugins because we can't process these instruments as a whole. We can process them individually, Really, a folder stack provides us a simplified version of a track stack. We have a fader, so we can adjust the level. We have mute, and we have solo. We still have the organizational tool of a folder. So let me drag this region, and let me drag it to both track lanes here, and we'll just mute these for now. So we can hear both play. Let me try and mute this region and drag this one up. But it turns out I can't because folder stacks are not designed to play multiple instruments as if they're one instrument. They're really just organizing and really a VCA fader or group for adjusting the level of multiple instruments. So a VCA fader essentially allows us to adjust the volume of multiple instruments as one. And you can see in the field here for VCA, it's been set to sub one, which is this folder stack. You may not be too familiar with VCA faders, but you may be pretty familiar with the master fader here at the end of the mixer. The master fader allows us to adjust the volume of our entire session. So these faders maintain their relative position, but we're adjusting the whole group as a whole. So as you can see, folder stacks are more for organizing and adjusting volume of groups of instruments, where summing stacks are more for processing and even creative opportunities of playing multiple instruments as one instrument. Now, I want to leave you with an Easter egg here. Many Logic users often ask, hey, how come I can't combine track stacks within track stacks? Which most of the time is true. In most configurations, you cannot compile track stacks within track stacks and for some, this is a big deal. But in one particular configuration, you actually can organize multiple track stacks under one style of track stack. Let me show you. If I take these tracks here, and let's just drag them out. And let me take these two tracks here. Excuse me. Let me expand and track here. Take these and drag them out. If I select all of these tracks and go to track, create track stack, folder stack, create. We 
now have a folder stack for these four instrument groups, right? But check it out. If I select these two tracks and then use Shift Command G to create a summing stack, I actually have created a summing stack within this folder stack. We can do the same here and the same here. Only in this configuration, you can't do folder stacks within summing stacks. You can't do summing stacks within summing stacks, but you can do summing stacks within folder stacks. I think you can see that there's a lot of opportunity when using track stacks. Don't overlook this tool within Logic. Whether it's for organizing, whether it's for creativity, track stacks are awesome. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new posts, new videos, new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.